Now in this video we're going to be talking about the distributions of proportions and this video is going to start a little set of a few of these and about distributions of proportions this is going to give us our basic introduction to the topic so we're often interested in making um, proportions of successes or, or dealing with probabilities of proportions of successes in discrete data and population proportions are just another name for population relative frequencies and they can be expressed as a fraction decimal or percentage part of the total population and likewise uh, sample proportions are uh, just another name for sample relative frequencies so some examples of proportions we would be interested in is proportion of voters supporting a particular candidate the proportion or percentage of patients responding to a certain treatment the proportion of students passing a class, the proportion of defective parts manufactured, and many, many, many more types of examples somewhat like this. Now remember, when we're dealing with the number of successes in a sample that are successes, uh, number of successes in a sample of a fixed size, the fixed sample size is n, lowercase, and the number of successes is x, then x is either a hypergeometric or binomial distribution depending on whether we are doing the sampling with replacement or without replacement. So the proportion of successes, we use the symbol P hat, we call this, the P with this little carrot over it, P wearing a hat, so that's P hat. In the sample is found by dividing the number of successes in the sample uh, by the sample size. So it's a sample relative frequency of successes. And so that gives us this formula, p hat is x over n. Or solving for x, x equals n times p hat. So if we know p hat, we can find x. And if we know x, we can find p hat uh, given, given the sample size of n. In fact, knowing any, any uh, two of these variables, we can find the other third one. Now, one word of warning. Remember, x must be a whole number. So when you do, say, say if they tell you p hat, and you want to find x, you multiply n times p hat. But if that turns out to be uh, not a whole number, that means the p hat was probably rounded off. But in working with these, we absolutely have to have a whole number for the value of x. Similarly, in the uh, hypergeometric, we have to have a, a, a whole number for the size of, well, both n's. Uh, the population size, sample size, both have to be whole numbers. And the uh, M, the number of successes in the population, uh, also has to be a whole number. Now, then it turns out that the output of the PDF for proportion distribution is the exact same as the output of the PDF for the X distribution, whether that's binomial or hypergeometric. So the input values are different, but the outputs are the same. So here's an example here where we take a binomial distribution where x is the number of successes, n equals the sample size is 10, p equals p naught or the true proportion or population relative frequency is 0.4 or 40%. And I use my binomial CDF and PDF functions in my calculator and worked out this PDF CDF table for x. So that's exactly what we did before for a binomial distribution of the number of successes. But all we do here is we just replace the x's here by their corresponding p hats. In other words, took all these x's and divided by the sample size, divided by 10, and we get these decimal values, 0, 0.1, 0 0.2, and so forth, for the corresponding p hat values, which would be the proportion, or we could put them in percentage form, percentage of successes in a, um, in the sample. So for example, if you have a sample size of 10 and six of them are successes, that means 0.6 of them or 60% of them are successes. But notice that the numbers here in the PDF CDF columns are exactly the same for both of these distributions. Now this would be basically the same if this was a hypergeometric instead of a binomial, except we'd be using the hypergeometric CDF and PDF uh, Function, uh, functions or programs to, to uh, complete this table, but the, the y values over here for the PDF and CDF, these would be exactly the same as they would be over here. We'd still have the same x as the same p hats.
but the probability values will be a little different if this was hypergeometric, uh, but they would be the same between the green and the yellow tables. So let's review again, something we've reviewed several times here. Uh, in both a hypergeometric and a binomial distribution, X represents the number of successes in the sample. Lowercase n is the number of uh, items in the sample, the sample size of the number of trials. In the hypergeometric, the selection is performed without replacement so that probably the success is not constant. In that case, we need to know the population size, which, must, which is some finite size, capital N. And then we also need to know the total original number of successes in the population, capital M. Then we can figure out P or P0, which is M divided by N, which is the probability of a success on the first trial. Subsequent probabilities of a success are conditional probabilities, which change depending on what is drawn out first. But on the first trial, we just take, it's the ratio of uh, successes in the population to the population size, M divided by N, which is the proportion of successes in the total population. In other words, it's a, it's a population relative frequency. Now, P is essentially the same thing, the probability of success on the first trial, and it's a proportion of successes in the total population for a binomial, but the selection is done with replacement, or we assume that the population size is basically infinite, so the probability of a success is constant each time. So this case, binomial, the probability P is the same every single time. And we have worked out formulas for these before. So the probability of X, or PDF of X, is uh, M choose X, which is a number of ways of choosing the X successes in the sample from the M successes in the population, times N, capital N minus M, choose little n minus X, which is the way of choosing the N minus X failures in the sample from the capital N minus M uh, failures in the population. Multiply those two and then divide that by capital N choose little n, that is the number of Little n is the number of items in the sample uh, chosen from the total items in the total population. The mean is the expected value of x, which reduces to n times p. And contrast the binomial distribution. The p of x, or pdf of x, is n choose x times p to the, k, p to the x, uh, q to the n minus x but the mean turns out to be NP. So the means basically have the same formula there, no matter what. So assuming they have the same N and same P, the bin binomial and hypergeometric have exactly the same center, the same mean. The variance, it's a pretty simple formula for the binomial distribution. The variance or sigma square is NPQ, so sigma is the square root of that, the square root of NPQ. And it's almost the same for the hypergeometric, with our appropriate substitutions here, we see that the variance is NPQ, like this one was here, but times this other fraction, capital N minus little n over N, capital N minus 1. That fraction is a fraction that is actually uh, less than 1. So that makes the variance smaller in the hypergeometric distribution. And we've seen this in some of our graphs, so that the hypergeometric distribution looks more or less like a binomial distribution in the PDF graph but it's a little narrower uh, or, or a little more focused around, the data is a little more focused around the mean. So the bars in the middle are a little higher, but the bars on the outer edges are a little smaller than the corresponding binomial distribution. As you let capital N get bigger and leave N, P and, little n, p, and q fixed, then this fraction gets closer and closer to 1, and everything over the hypergeometric approaches the corresponding binomial. So how does this apply to distribution of proportions? Well, if you want to find a distribution of proportions, just find the corresponding x values, which are n times p hat values, and then use a hypergeometric or binomial distribution as appropriate to find the desired probability. So we will use a hypergeometric distribution if the selection is performed without replacement, so the probability of success is not constant. Again, P is the proportion of successes uh, in the population. Um, X equals N times P hat is the number of successes in a sample. N is as little N is the sample size. 
the number of trials. Capital N is the population size, which is finite and known. Capital M is the total number of original successes in the population. And P or P naught is capital M over N is the probability of success in the first trial or the proportion of successes in the total population. Now, notice that a hypergeometric is uh, includes sampling without replacement, which is actually realistic. Uh, the fact that it requires a finite population, that's also realistic. Usually when we go out and sample, there is actually a finite number of items out there. It may be big, but it's finite. And we're sampling without putting the bag most of the time. Most of the time we go out and select something, we don't put it back when we select the second one. We don't allow repeats. But notice this, it has a drawback because the population size must be known to use a hypergeometric. And you need to be able to know or figure out the total number of successes in that population. And that's not always practical. Okay. Now, at a binomial, the sampling is done with replacement, which is not as realistic. But if the population is infinite or some other way, we think that that, pop, that probability of success each time is consistent, then the binomial is appropriate. Also, the binomial has the advantage of not needing to know the population size. Now, luckily, if the population size is very large and we are sampling a relatively small percentage of the population, then the binomial distribution is a good approximation of the hypergeometric distribution with the same mean and standard deviation. So we will often use a binomial even when the situation is technically hypergeometric if the population size is very large because we do not need to know that population size. Okay, let's look at an example or two here. There are 90 people in an organization. 30% of them are under 25 years old. A random sample of 10 people are chosen from this organization. What is the probability that there will be more than 40% of the sample who are under 25 years old? Notice we're asking about percentages of things. We're talking about proportions here. But if you look, there is a finite and known population size of capital N equals 90. If X is the number of successes, a success being a person under 25 year old in our sample, then X is a, has a hypergeometric distribution. And so the proportion of successes in our sample also has essentially a hypergeometric distribution. The sample size little n is 10. Now, when we work this out, 30% of the 90 turns out to be, uh, well, that's 27. So we know that capital M is 27 successes. Now, had that not turned out to be a whole number, we would have known that the 30% had been rounded off. Okay, so let P hat be the proportion of success as a sample. We know that proportion probably should be computed using a hypergeometric distribution, so we can use our HGOCDF function or program. So the question is the probability that the P hat will be more than 40%. Well, the probability that P hat is greater than 0.4 is saying that the corresponding X is. Uh, greater than 0.4 times the sample size of 10, which is 4. Probably that x is greater than 4, and it has to be a whole number. So that's really for x going from 5 up to, well, the sample size, which is in this case is 10. So the probability that x is between 5 and 10 for a hypergeometric, where population size is 90, run our program. Population size is 90. Number of successes in the population is 27. Sample size is 10. And our interval of successes is from 5 to 10, lower 5, upper 10. And that turns out to be about 0.13698932, or in other words, about 13.7%. In the TI-84 calculator, we would run these screens here as we run our program. So you'd start by hitting program and running that program. I'm assuming that you have that put in. If not, go back to an earlier video or slide, and it will show you how to get that program in. In the in TI Inspire, 
Also, the program is not built in, but we have programmed it in. Again, go to refer you back to an earlier video if you don't have that back in yet, and earlier slides. This is HGO CDF. Again, you just give it 90, 27, 10, uh, 5, and 10, which is the uh, population size first, then the number of successes in the population, then the sample size, and then the lower X and upper X for our range of values uh, that of the number of successes in the sample. And again, that's about 13.7%. Here's another example. 20% of all dentists prefer brand A floss. A random sample of 20 dentists are surveyed. Was the probability that no more than 10% of them prefer brand A floss? So even though there is a finite population of dentists in the world, uh, it's an unknown and, and pretty large population size. We're only sampling 20 of them. So even though the sampling is done without replacement, we're sampling a small percentage of the total unknown and large population size. Even though this technically actually hypergeometric, it can be uh, worked out with a binomial, and we'll have to use a binomial because we don't know the population size. So this is just a binomial distribution with n equals 20, sample size of 20, and the probability of the success uh, is assumed to be the same each time we pick one of these dentists which is point two, a success being uh, finding one that prefers this particular brand. So what's the probability that no more than 10%, no more than 10% is a proportion that is uh, less than or equal to 10%, 10% being point 0.1. So what we're trying to find is the probability that p hat is less than or equal to point 0.1. Well, p hat is x over n, multiply both sides by n, n being 20, we get 0.1 times n, that's 0.1 times 20 is 2. Again, that has to be a whole number. So if it's not a whole number, then uh, then the prop percentage has been rounded off. Okay, or anyway, we we uh, we go in this case we would go down to the next bigger next one anyway. So the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 is the same as the probability that x is between 0 and 2 inclusive. That's the binomial CDF. Uh, CDF on a binomial on a TI-84 always goes from, uh, well, CDFs in general go from forever left up to where we are. Forever left in this case is just zero because there's nothing to the left of zero that has a probability. So this is the probability that X is between zero and two. Okay. And that's just binomial CDF. You give it N, P, and X. So it's 20.2 and two. That's the probability that x is less than or equal to 2, or in other words, between 0 and 2. And uh, here's what it looks like if you have the newer operating system. It lasts you trials is 20, p is 0.2, x values 2, paste. If you do it without that, uh, the older operating system, you just have to type in binome CDF 20, 0, 0.2, 2. Once again, remember binome CDF is under distributions, uh, which is second VARS, second variables is distribution. You see that up above it. And then actually, if you'll up arrow, you get there faster than down arrow. And binomial CDF, I believe, is just B. So if you've got that memorized, you could just do um, uh, second variables, which is distribution, and then just do alpha B to get to buy that this one, and then enter in the information. On the um, TI Inspire, it almost works the same way, except the TI Inspire, rather than going from forever left up to the number, it goes between two numbers, and you have to put those in. So it's binomial CDF of 20, 0, 0.202. You can find binomial CDF actually two places. Go to Menu. You can find it under Statistics Distributions, or you can find it under st uh, Probability Distributions. And then you can see it either way. You get that. It turns out to be 20.6%. So we'll look at some more applications in our next video.